this is an occasion for us all and for the old odd to have such an incredible singer here to perform is just, I mean, I think this building will be resounding for years with what you're going to hear. Um, I know the students yesterday, they, when Sondra started to sing, they went, <laughs> <laughs> and you will too. What a pleasure to have Sondra Radvanovsky here today. The greatest soprano in the world today and opening the Met season uh, on September 25th with uh, Aunt Norma. And uh, she's dropping down to LA tomorrow to see Placido Domingo and do a concert with him. But we have her first, right? <laughs> and we have her because we have Manuel Bernacek with Showcase Pianos, who has given us this marvelous faziole for today and who has sponsored Ms. Radonofsky. And I really want to thank him so much for this. This could not have happened without him. Thank you so much. But the person with the idea, and she is a fabulous woman and so incredible, is Sonia Wall. And had she not said, you know, we need to have Sondra Radvanovsky here. I said, really, do you think we can? And she said, well, we can't have her if we don't ask. So we did. And because Sondra is the wonderful person she is, she said yes. And we are so lucky to have her. So I don't want to talk anymore because you're going to hear this wonderful voice. But let's give her a heartfelt UBC welcome. And we are just so appreciative that she came here today. And she's uh, going to be on the stage today with our own Richard Epp, who is uh, accompanying Sandra. And I want to thank him. Uh, for doing that for us today and later on you'll see all of our young ensemble members as well with her What a privilege for them to sing actually on the same stage with her at their ages. It seems unfair, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyway, please give Sondra Radvanovsky a great welcome. and the introduction. My goodness, my head's going to start to swell. <laughs> but um, I just want you all to know that this is very special for me to be here. Um, go Canada. And, <laughs> and to hopefully all of you will stay for the master class as well and hear um, all these wonderful singers sing not only in the master class but to sing with me later on. So enjoy and thank you all for coming.
special meaning to me because my father was Czech and I am part Czech and um, Dvorak was his favorite composer and he never got to hear me sing live as an opera singer so very emotional for me so the, the pieces I chose today to sing are all very important pieces to me because I wanted to share them with you my extended Canadian family and the second aria that I'm going to sing is from an opera that um, I, I dare say it's my favorite opera, um, which is Tosca. You know, they're all my favorites. That's the problem. <laughs> um, which is Tosca. And it, it actually, I'm going to be singing it, gosh, in a few weeks down in Los Angeles, if any of you want to come down and see a really cool production. But uh, this is Visi d'Arte, and... Um, all of you singers know that the reason why we're all here today is because we love singing, right? And we have to do it. It's not that we can't, you know. It's in our blood. Oh! Oh! <laughs> and in, in this day and age with everything going on in the world, I think that the most important thing right now is for us to sing and share the beauty of music. And so, Visidarte from Tosca.
Okay, how are you all today? Yep. Thank you, thank you for coming in. And then in the middle of the day, and such a beautiful, sunny, shiny day, I mean, there's nothing else you would rather be doing than sitting inside. Yeah, that's right. Your lives will never be the same. That's <laughs> right. The bar has been set, my dears. Well, I'm, I'm probably a few years older than all of you. So. <laughs> Not bit, much. But, well, I'm actually 32, so yeah. But I've been in all your positions. I was here, and I did exactly what you guys are doing. So you know what? Yeah. It's the, it's just live the dream and keep working. That's yeah, what I live the dream. And I need to um, continue my thank yous. With Showcase Pianos and Manuel and Sonia, thank you so much. And of course, Charlotte Wall, too, has been very integral in getting this wonderful lady here. And then we have the Peter Wall Institute, who has been such a wonderful partner in our series of Singer Behind the Song, and we're so grateful to them. And of course, the Wall Sheridan Center, So, because that's where we were able to uh, house uh, Sandra and her wonderful husband, Duncan, who is back there. And um, it's just su such a wonderful thing to see people who are really interested in such wonderful artists, first of all, and then all of the education of our wonderful students. So, um, you're from Chicago, born, yes. born and um, you won in 1995 Correct. the Metropolitan Opera Competitions, went to the Lindemann Young Artist Development Program, mm -hmm. and, um, and then let's, could you describe a little bit about your process as you went on and how that was for you as a person with a big voice like yours, sure. and that's the patience that it takes for those big voices. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah, that, that is the key word is patience. Um, well, uh, I'm so old that it wasn't even called the Lindemann Young Artist Program when I was in it. Um, <laughs> yes, so I have to tell you, all of you sitting here, all you singers, that everyone has a different journey and a different path that we take to get to where we are now. Um, I was very fortunate in that I was invited into the Met Young Artist Lindemann program when I was only 25 years old. Um, and I had a voice that was very wild and unruly because it was such a large voice. I guess, everybody told me it was large. And I won the Met competition singing Ritorna Vincitor from Aida. And the only reason I didn't sing O Patria Mia is because I didn't have a high C. And that truly was the only, so at 25, I was singing Aida. Silly, I mean, completely crazy. So they luckily invited me into the Young Artist Program, but only for one year, because they weren't sure I was gonna cut it, and that um, I was trainable. Um, <laughs> guess I proved them wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> I wouldn't want to be that judge. That's yeah. what I. <laughs> well, you know that who that person was was just a little nobody called Maestro James Levine. <laughs> <laughs> well, Oops. even he can be wrong. Yeah. And so uh, they invited me into the program, and I did a, a stage audition. We all had to do them. We had to go and stand on the Met stage. Uh, and have all of the head staff of the Met out there, Maestro Levine, and you know, top to bottom. And Maestro Levine, after I sang, I can't even remember what I sang. It might have been Tosca. And he said, <clears throat> God, Mike, um, Sandra, have you ever sung any Mozart? <laughs> and I had just sung Puccini, right? And Verdi, and I just started, I was so emotional that day, and I just started, <laughs> Mozart! <laughs> <laughs> I don't sing Mozart. <laughs> so thus, thus started my career at the Met. Um, <laughs> and I gosh darn well learned Mozart, yes. One aria, but you know, I did learn Mozart just to appease them. But I say that story only because um, I was very fortunate. They did keep me on for three years. And to be in a program like that and to have the exposure of Every, any and every artist, conductor, uh, diction coach, coach, language coach, I mean, you name it, we were given that. And I was like a sponge, as I'm sure all of you are, and sat in on production rehearsals and went to every dress rehearsal and, 
you know, you learn not only from the great singers, but from the okay singers, or from the really bad ones, because you learn what you shouldn't be doing, as well as what you should be doing. So I just soaked it up, and luckily they gave me a little roll, like fourth tree to the left, and then third tree to the right, <laughs> and finally I was center stage singing, you know, something like Antonia and the Tales of Hoffman. But big voices take time to bake, as I call it, and as you said. And I was fortunate that I had a salary, as well as a place to allow that talent to grow, and to have people that advise me correctly. And I was lucky, I was studying with a great teacher, Ruth Falcon is her name, and she really knew what to do with big voices like Deborah Voigt, um, as an example of one of the singers that studied with her. So patience really is the biggest thing. And as a young singer nowadays, and in this day and age, I will say, and I'm sure you come across this all the time, we are in an instant society that wants instant gratification. And unfortunately with singing, it doesn't happen like that. We have to allow the voice to grow naturally and in a very healthy way. And I was afforded that luxury. And I fear that my generation might have been the last generation that was afforded that luxury because opera houses are closing, getting funding cut. And it is our job, all of us in here, to keep this art form alive, living, thriving, and enough places for all of you to sing. So, end, of, end of soapbox rant. <laughs> um, did that answer your question? Yes, it sure did. That was great. Um, I was reading in the New York Times an article about that you had done an, an interview, and it said after you left the Lindemann Artist Program, you started on your way of your career, mm -hmm. and that process, how did that ha ha help you? How did, how did that go? You sort of went steadily, 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 and not jumping into um, huge stakes and in yeah. huge places right away, or what? Yeah, well, as I said, we all have a different path and a different journey. Um, I was very, very, very lucky. Did I say very? In that, my teacher and I, we decided instead of Mozart that um, we would learn Il Trovatore uh, because it was close enough in the bel canto style of Verdi. It was close enough to Mozart and that kind of, I don't know, line that one has to walk to sing the vocal line. So we decided that Il Trovatore, Leonore and Trovatore was going to be my role to learn how to sing, basically, and to allow my voice to grow naturally in using the bel canto style. So I think I sang Leonore and Trovatore in every theater in the world. Um, and you know, it, for me, it was great because it opened a lot of doors. It was a role that I really grew up with in a way. And it was not a small voice role, but it wasn't a big girl role either. It was kind of somewhere in the middle because I wasn't a lyric soprano really, but I wasn't yet a dramatic soprano or a spinto soprano. I was kind of somewhere in the middle and still learning how to sing properly. So I was lucky in that I had a manager that realized that, okay, this is gonna be the way that we're gonna do this. We're gonna go and you're gonna sing Leonora everywhere in the world. And each time I sang it and I walked on stage, walking on stage for me was my greatest teacher because if I made a mistake one night, I said, oh, right, I'm not gonna do that again, now am I? And that's how I learned really was, yeah, let me get that was by singing, singing Trovatore all around the world. Now other people have different roots. Um, smaller voices sometimes have it a little easier because there's larger repertoire for all of you to sing and um, things like that. But a, a young speedento soprano, yeah, pretty limited. So, which one? Yeah. Do you want to get Sandra some plain water? Not, Thank you. Not yeah, we, you don't want me burping when I'm singing, <laughs> Costa Diva. Not, Not such a good thing. Not such a good thing. So that that was yeah. terrific, and then was, and then that took you back to the mat, like yeah. as I understand from that interview that Peter yeah. Gelp heard well, that and thought, oh my God. Well, sometimes you have to go away and grow up, mm -hmm. you know. And all of you, when you leave when you leave school here, you're all going to go away, and you're going to find your own path. And some of you will find that path, and unfortunately, some of you won't follow that path. 
but hopefully music will still be in your future. And I'm sorry to, to tell you that, but you know, some of you won't have careers. And that's the God's honest truth nowadays because I, I'm being honest, it's very difficult, right? Yeah. I mean, traveling around the world with two suitcases and you know, not getting sleep and dealing with jet lag and dealing with the politics of it all. And it's tough. It's really, it's not, everybody thinks that we eat bonbons and sit in hotel rooms. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. And yeah, but I was very lucky. And so I came back to the Met. And by the time I came back to the Met, Peter Gelb was the general manager at that point. And um, yeah, and he gave me Trovatore. And you know, to this day at 47 years old, I'm still learning and still growing. And, each time I step on the stage, I learn something new, honestly and truly. And that's what's so great about this art form, is that we can continue to grow and learn up until the day we die. So Yeah. yeah. And your teacher, Ruth Falcon, you were saying we were talking yesterday about marking and how that's what a singer does when they don't sing full voice in, and, uh, in rehearsals and uh, yeah. to preserve their voice as well and not to leave it all in the rehearsal room. And it's a very hard thing to do, and I was just going to ask Sandra about that, because I remember you saying about your teacher yesterday how she yeah. really helped you with that. Well, I was very fortunate in that, um, you know, I, I, I have sung at the Met now for what, this will be my 23rd, 24th year coming up next season, and it really was my home theater, and my voice teacher was always there in the same city, so anytime I had a problem, you just go, excuse me. <laughs> and we're singing at the Met sometimes four or five hours a day. I mean, full out singing, rehearsals, coachings. And that, that's just humanly not possible. Um, so I came into her one day and I was really tired vocally and I said, you know, what, what am I doing? What am I doing wrong? <laughs> she said, um, Sandra, um, are you marking any of these rehearsals? I said, um, what's marking? <laughs> So he said, right, we're going to take this hour today and I'm going to teach you how to sing half voice or down the octave. Now, it depends upon what voice type you are and how comfortable you are, but there's two different ways of marking. One is taking your vocal line down the octave, right, um, which doesn't put as much pressure on your voice. The other way, which is what I do, is sing in the octave, but just take the pressure off of the voice and we put it in this little tiny position up here in the head, and it kind of sounds like a little gnat, <laughs> honestly. But what we do when we mark then is take the pressure off the vocal cords slapping together so hard. It's like the difference between me talking like this, or me not using a mic and using my real voice to project, right? Both can be heard, but one puts a little less pressure on the voice. So by marking, you want me to, to discuss it now, or are we going to discuss it later in the master class? I was wondering if she could come up, this young lady here in the, with the red hair, Nicole. Oh, poor Nicole. Let's put her on the spot. <laughs> come up. So, um, to Mark, come on up. I don't bite, honestly. Some days will. She's not usually in an evening <laughs> gown, but they're in their gowns for Nicole. the concert. Yeah. So, um, what type of voice type are you first? Uh, lyric, lyric soprano. Lyric soprano, okay. So what, what roles are you singing now? What's a good? Uh, I, well, we just did Eugenia uh, Negan, I did Tatiana, and okay. then um, do like Mano and Musetta. Um, okay, and so middle voice. Yeah. So to Mark, I'm going to demonstrate, and then I'm going to use you as the guinea pig to, to see if we can figure this one out, okay? So marking, basically, what you want to do is uh, at least the upper part of the voice for sopranos. I'm just going to talk about sopranos because tenors, you guys are all completely different. <laughs> you could probably mark in falsetto all day long, right? Or baritones, you guys can do it too in that fake falsetto counter tenor kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> but for sopranos, we, we have to sing in much higher than where we speak, right? And it's always a difficulty getting that height and that dome on the top of the voice. So the way to find it is basically um, humming. And I will do, this is a C up to a G. And what we just want to do is get into these upper partials up here in the top part of the voice. Now we do that by lifting that palate, that hard palate, and 
just humming like that. Palate is high, throat is open. Key to marking is keeping the throat open because oftentimes we'll do that. <laughs> right, and that's actually more harm than singing full out. So what we want to do when we take the inhalation of the breath, can you do a little hung for me? Like humming. Yeah, you feel that place up here? Little more height, and what we want to feel is that the molars are open. You grit your teeth like this, see how I am? Now, they're open. There's no space. Uh, there, sorry, their teeth aren't together. There is space, sorry. Oh, I'm still in singer mode. There you go. That's okay, you're getting this. And that, that little tiny spot, we have to keep our throat open, and we have to use the, the breast support for it. So it's, ah, that kind of thing. So that, I'm just going to quick show you. So I'm doing Costa Diva, right? Nice marked little position, as opposed to Same amount of air used for it, right? But we just limit the amount, that little thread of air. It's a thread of air, not a full stream of air. Same position, but it goes up into this little spot up here, that little gnat, and it's further away from you, you station tubes. Sorry, further away from your ears here, so it's gonna sound really like eh. But that's how we mark, and I'm gonna have you mark down a little bit, down lower here. How about you do for me? Like you're singing, pull out, just a thinner line of air. See what I mean? On a yaw. Feel that? Mm -hmm. Do you feel you still have the support for it? Mm -hmm. Now sing it full out for me. Yeah, and you see, do you feel the same place? Mm -hmm. It's just the air is kind of thinner, thinner line of air. Now try it again, soft. Yeah, try for me. Oh no, just a hum. Feel that place right there. Now sing y'all from there. Now less there. There's marking. That's how we mark. And sometimes we have to go to it from full voice and then pull back to feel what that's like so we don't close our throat. Does that make sense? So uh, let's see. Um, I don't know where the letter aria starts. Who's kind of hungry? Let's let's just make, make it up. <laughs> oh, I see you. Oh, the sky Right, as opposed to. Oh, the sky Does that make sense? Yeah. The the whole marking thing. Yeah, so did you normally, you normally worked on it from the hum? And yes, from yeah. the hum, always from the hum or from a hum, all of that, because it finds this little position here. We want to keep it very frontal. We want to keep it along the nose, in the mask here, as opposed to pulling back. Because that's a, t sorry, as a, that's a tendency as a singer when we're singing soft is to listen to ourselves. And so we pull it back. And then you can't keep this nice ringy place where the voice has to ring when we mark. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> sing the first line out for me, full voice. Are you warmed up? You're good. You're good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not with, you can do, turn your back on him if you want to. <laughs> you guys aren't here. Feel that? Yeah. 
Now try, feel that, try it one more time, feel with that. Now open it up to an off. That's where the marking position has to come from. Very forward, yeah? Yeah, but when you went up high, like when I went up high, I felt like it was losing like that focus. Is that normal? You're probably pulling your tongue a little bit, but we'll get into that in the master class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think of the, the tip of the tongue here. Sorry, I know you want to move on. The tip of the tongue here. There you go, it's going into whistly. It will, it'll feel a little whistle, and you have to work on it. It's, it's something that has to be developed. We're not gonna learn how to mark yeah. overnight, but I promise you that also is gonna help your singing voice. Yeah. Because it keeps it very, in, are you Slavic? No. I'm, no? I'm Canadian. Oh, you're Canadian, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. You just, your, your Russian is good, so it's your like, heritage. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Swedish heritage. No? Yeah, Norwegian heritage. No, okay. Norwegian. Yeah. okay, but this, this keeping it here in the front, is going to help you, and we can work on it in the master class too a little bit more. Now that I know a little bit more about your voice, so I can kind of show you the direction a little bit of that. But yes, it's going to sound really. We have it's something that we have to work on, and we have to try to find that place because we all want to close the throat. And you, what you want to do is maybe slide into it. You feel that? Yeah. Well, no, I. Do. <laughs> Yeah. I sorry, I say feel that because I'm a, I feel things when other singers yeah, sing, no, so I, I get a sensation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Try one more time, and then we're gonna go and talk more. There you go. You just have to get used to the sensation yeah. of it, and then it comes from there. Same place, mm -hmm. just less air. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. I think we, we banged up. Spot. And you're so famous for your pianissimos. Well, they it's, come from the same just, place. It, and that's, it's yeah. just, mm. the encouraging thing to work for, guy. Is Didn't this, happen overnight. And I will tell you, I'm 47 and it, it took me 20 years to learn how to do that. So, you right. know. And, and I read that one of your favorite singers was Collis. And I noticed so many similarities. I, I like, I watch you sing and I think, where does all that sound come from? And it's so effortless. And mm. It was the same, I just, it's a marvel. It's, uh, well, we're all given a gift, yeah. you know, I think. And um, I was very lucky to figure out that my gift was singing at a very early age. Um, my, as my mother said, I was born with my mouth open and never shut it since. <laughs> but, um, truly, she did say it. Uh, but we all have gifts, you know, and I think um, it's also my gift, I think, to share all of this information with all of you and all of you um, because I have been so fortunate to have so many great people teach me so much um, and I've gleaned all this information from everyone and hopefully hopefully I can help some of you with all of this and everyone as I said has a different path and what I say might not vibrate with all of you but um, I know what works for me and what I've been taught is one of your, I mean, you've sung Norma so many times, you're going to yes. open the mat with Norma again yes. this year, and this, which is great. Yay! So, um, how, what does that role for you, is that a particular meaning for you, that one? Because you've done so many roles. Uh, Norma, Norma. Norma, oh, Norma's a very stressful role to sing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. What Birgit Nielsen say, what it takes to sing Norma is just a good pair of shoes, or was that Brunhilde? I don't know. But <laughs> they're both the same in my book. Um, but I love the music, and I love the character. Um, and for me, choosing roles, it's not just the vocal thing, but also the dramatic thing. And I really have to feel something for a character to sing it. Um, to sing Norma... <sighs> It's, it's overwhelming, I'm gonna say. That's the word that comes to my mind right now because every great soprano that I've admired in the past generation, two generations, singing generations, has sung Norma. And to step into those shoes and to do the role justice requires a lot of work and a lot of discipline. Um, 
Yeah, but the reward is great. Is there any rule that you're just dying to do that you haven't done? Um, boy, you know, after the three queens at the Metropolitan I Opera, know. Um, <laughs> it's kind of hard to top. Yes, uh, Peak Dom, I'm dying to do. And, you know, I'm very lucky in that I have all of the roles planned in the future that I really am dying to do, except for Turn Dot. That's not on the books yet, but that's one that I really want to sing as well. But I'm so lucky I get to sing all of this great music. And, uh, you know, I find my voice has finally grown into the roles that I always wanted to sing from when I was 11, 12 years old. And to, to step on the stage and, and sing Tosca and sing Norma and all of this is a great joy. And, um, yeah, there's some great new roles coming up in my future, some obscure ones, Poliuto. I mean, not a lot of people know that role. Um, I'm doing my first Andrea Chenier next season, which, ooh, that's big girl music. Um, and Medea is coming up in the future. Yeah, speaking of crazy people, so. But you're, you're also, you always slip into that character too, like if such a fantastic actress and oh, thank just you. right here in the old odd just with those arias we could see everything oh, also another you. similarity between you and Carlos who was such a great actor. Do we have time for me to quick tell a little story? Yeah. I was just in Paris and I'm going to try not to tear up when I say this. Um, I sang a new role in Paris. I sang Simon Bougregre and all the times I've been to Paris I've never gone to see the apartment where Maria Callas lived. So we had an afternoon free, my husband and I said, hey, it's a beautiful day, let's go take a walk. So we walked over to see Maria Callas' apartment, and um, there's this plaque up on outside of the, the, the apartment, and we were taking a picture, and my husband was taking a picture of me standing there, and gosh, the porter comes, and he opens the gate out into the little garden there, and he gestures to me to, to come. He didn't speak French, but he didn't speak Italian, I, I'm not quite sure what it was. And he just motioned and he said, come, you know, come on in. <laughs> oh, like, okay, yeah, keep my calm. Okay, yeah, great, thank you. You know, and he gestures to the plaque. And so we take some pictures and, and I'm like, okay, thank you, thank you very much. And he said, no, 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 you know. He opens the door to the apartment building. <laughs> ah! And uh, inside the foyer there is this, this elevator. And uh, like the, you know, the door of an elevator. And it's all wood and... And it looks kind of like a confessional, actually. And um, he gestures to it, and he said, Maria Callas' private elevator. And he opens the door, and he goes, you know, go take a photo. OK. And then I said, you know, I'm like, thank you very much. And, OK, we'll go. No, 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 come, come, come. <laughs> Points to the staircase. That's the private staircase up to Maria Callas' apartment. And he goes, you know, go take a photo. OK, all right. You know, and here I am, just like, ha oh, Maria Callas, because I never got to meet her, and she was really my idol. So, you know, I thank him, I thank him, and we walk out of the apartment, and I promptly burst into tears. So I was like, I got to see where Maria Callas lived and died. And then, stupid us, you know, this porter spent 15, 20 minutes of his life, and, you know, you should probably give him a little reward for that, and we're walking down the street, and we just go, oh, crap. If we didn't give the guy any money to say thank you, I was so overwhelmed. But I have to tell you, that was, like, what are the odds of the porter of the building being there and opening the gates right when I'm there? So I felt like, yep, Maria Callas was there looking down at me saying, you're doing okay, Sandra, so, yeah. <laughs> Good. So this is good. And now speaking of Norma, let's have our singers come and join us Yay. and let's sing some Norma <laughs> and some Stuarda. Okay, all look pretty. Wow. <laughs> so we're going to do Casta Diva from Norma. And we're going to do the recitativo, and I think. Right. We have a lovely Oroveso to sing my daddy. <laughs> and I don't think I need to tell you all why Norma and Costa Diva is so important to me. I love the music. It's a role that I've really been associated with and that I have a real great affinity towards. 
and I'm just so fortunate to have all of these wonderful young singers to back me up today. So enjoy Costa <laughs> Viva.
piece this afternoon. This is from one of Donizetti's Three Queens. It is from the opera Maria Stuarda. Um, it's the story of Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots. And this is, thank you, this is such a very moving scene. It's uh, in the middle of the last act, and Mary knows that Elizabeth I has sent her off to go um, get a little trim. <laughs> yeah. And um, this is what she says to all of her friends, family, and people that live with her. She says, don't be sad. Don't be sad for me, because I'm going to a better place. And so let's all just join together in singing prayer, this song. And it's basically praising God for all of his humbleness and all of his greatness. And shows what a, an amazing woman Mary, Queen of Scots, was in that this final moments of her life. She says, you know, let's just all remember what the big picture is and that we're all going to a better place. So this is from the finale of Maria Stuarda. And excuse me for using music, but my head is so full of music right now. <laughs> 